Hey Scouters, this is Cowboy713 from Fishing Scout. Today we're going to learn how to tie the San Juan Worm. Now, the San Juan Worm was named after the San Juan River in New Mexico, where this pattern was originally developed and used. It's made to mimic the native aquatic worm of the San Juan River, but since most of our lakes and streams have some type of aquatic worm living in them, it does a really good job of presenting a worm pattern for just about every body of water you can fish in. It is really effective for catching a wide variety of different species. I've personally caught it on, or caught rainbow trout, brown trout, bluegill, and other uh, brim species, largemouth bass, catfish, carp and I think that's it but oh no red horse sucker as well it does a really good job of catching all of these species just because it looks like something they want to eat it kind of wiggles a little bit in the water you can drift it you can bounce it you can um, you can actually jig it if you wanted to you could nymph this and it's got so many different variations you can tie it in. I, you can tie it in a brown color, you can tie it in this neon hot pink, red. Um, I even tie it sometimes in this chartreuse, this lime green chartreuse color, just for the fact that bluegills and stuff like that really like that color for some reason. Um, other popular colors are like a flesh tone, uh, olive green, I've heard of people using black, but I've never tied it in that color just because it didn't seem like it would be useful to me. White is another good one that a lot of people like. Uh, it just has a lot of different variations. You can tie it with or without weight. Today I am going to put some copper um, wire ribbing in there to give it a little bit of weight. You can tie it with flash, which I'll be doing today. Um, you can tie it with a monofilament center so it gives off a little glossy shiny look there's just so many different variations of this worm that you can use to your advantage to make it look just how you want it to catch the fish you want to catch so we're going to go ahead and get started i'm going to go ahead and set up my stuff and i'll be right with y'all in just a second all right so hopefully y'all are able to uh clearly see this <clears throat> um today i'm going to use a about a size 12 <clears throat> nymph hook that's what this looks like this little curved hook um, it does a really good job of making it you know giving a natural curve to the San Juan worm um, I have tied these all the way from 12 down to size 16 and 18 I've heard of people tying them down as far as like a size 20 or 22 but I don't have any reason to tie them that small. The trout on my river that I fish are not that picky and nothing else that I fish for with these are that picky. So let's go ahead and get this little guy set in the clamp. The vise, I should say. So there's that. <clears throat> Very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wrap in the... Uh, copper this is just plain copper wire I actually pulled this out of a piece of like speaker wire it works really well you don't have to go to the uh, to the fly shop to get copper like this um, and you just you're gonna wrap it if I can get a hold of it there we go you're gonna wrap it to where it makes nice even consecutive wraps So you're just going to sit here and wrap this down. I'm going to go ahead and trim off this little tag in right here because it's not needed. Nice thing about this nice soft copper is you can actually cut it with your fly tying scissors. If you don't want to do that, you can cut it with wire nips or whatever you got. So we're just going to keep wrapping this down, wrapping, wrapping, wrapping. 
So you get it as far down as you want. I want this one to be fairly heavy. The larger um, ones, since they're not really much heavier than the smaller ones, without weight added to them, they tend to sink a little bit slower because their density is not quite as high. That's about as far as I want to go with it. I'm going to go ahead and snip off this tag in there. I'm going to go ahead and press it down. That way it's, the end's not sticking up there. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to tie my worm today is going to be in this this brand, uh, brown color. Um, just because it's a natural color that's what I use most of the time are the natural or the red or the brown or the, the uh, skin tone. So I've got my brown or kind of beige thread here. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to make a couple wraps right here at the head. And then we're going to start wrapping it all the way down the body. This, does, this serves two purposes. This is going to help hold the wire in place. Go ahead and snip off my tag in here. This is going to help hold the wire in place and it is going to get us to our starting point for actually tying the fly because we start for this fly we start down towards the the uh, shank of the hook or the uh, the bend of the hook not the eye of the hook <clears throat> okay now that I'm tied all the way down here we're gonna go ahead and tie in the first section of our flash now if you can as you can see here this flash is quite a bit longer than this hook that's okay we're not gonna be using all of this we're gonna be trimming down here in a minute. So I'm going to start with about, oh, about a half an inch hanging off the end here. I'm going to go ahead and gently just wrap that on. Make another wrap here to hold it. And then from there, while that's just sitting there for a second, I'm going to go ahead and pull off my section of worm. Now, and the lakes and streams that I use, this is called, here, let me explain this first. This is called Ultra Chanel. And it comes in a huge variety of colors from just about any uh, tackle shop or uh, fly fishing shop you can go to. Um, it's pretty thin. It actually has a, this particular brand has like a nylon center in it. So it allows you to melt the ends of this which helps keep it from unraveling because if you don't melt the ends it will unravel on you and it makes a big mess and your fly is pretty much kaput after a couple uses. So I've got my section here but I don't want one nearly this long. I actually want my fly to be about that long. It'll fit this, actually it will make them a little bit longer because I'm using a larger, larger hook today. So about that long. That'll fit this hook pretty nicely. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to snip that off, make it the length that I want it to be. And then now I'm going to take my lighter here, just a standard lighter, I mean it's nothing special. And you just kind of singe the ends on both sides. Now. On most of them, that's all I do is just singe the ends of it so they don't unravel. But if I'm tying a really small one, like a size 16 or an 18, I'll actually take the lighter and run it down the entire length of this because what it'll do is it singes the little fuzzy hairs that are on here making this material. And it'll actually, when it singes them, it'll actually kind of shrivel them a little bit and this will actually get thinner than it already is. It's kind of a little trick a friend of mine taught me. So now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, Chanel on here. And we're going to do a couple wraps right here. We're going to make sure that the worm stays on the outer edge of the bend of the hook. Three, four, five. 
Okay, so now that's in place. We've got that set. You see we've got plenty of material still here to work with that'll still hang off the other end here, which is what we want. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pull the Chanel back and we're going to wrap down over the flash here just a little bit to kind of get to the middle of the worm. Now we're gonna press the Chanel back down and make sure it's still straight again. And we're gonna make a few wraps in the middle here. This kind of helps it to stay with the hook the whole way we're, so we're not uh, it's not gonna bunch up in the middle or it's not gonna be getting all crooked on us so we got one wrap here and we got another one right there so again we're gonna go ahead and pull the Chanel back and we're gonna wrap down over the flash and we're gonna press the Chanel back down again and we're gonna wrap again. Now if you noticed, I did not start wrapping this last wrap all the way down at the eye of the hook. Why? Because I've still gotta make, have enough room down here at the eye of the hook to go ahead and do my, um, to go ahead and do my whip finish on here. So next thing we're gonna do is, so we have our three wraps here around the, uh, around the Chanel and the hook. I'm going to go through and I'm going to snip off the excess uh, flash right here. So there's still quite a bit hanging off, but we've trimmed a good portion of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull me out some thread. And this is where I'm going to finish off my fly. Again, a lot of fly tires use a... Um, a um, whip finishing tool for this. I'm just as happy, oops, unless I do that. And I'm just as happy using my fingers to do this, though it is much easier with larger flies. And you can get those tools at any fly tying shop. They all carry it. And there's different variations. I'm just gonna do three wraps here. Go ahead and pull my fingers out. Use my scissors as a slide here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that's pulled snug. And trim off the excess thread there. And there you have it. That's your San Juan worm uh, with flash. The other piece of flash is down here. It looks like it got stuck down in the vise. But so the flash kind of hangs off. It just gives the fish something to look at. It kind of catches their attention. But the worm itself, it's got this nice uh, natural curve to it. Uh, there's lots of different ways people do this. Sometimes people only do one wrap right there. And so the ends of the worm can kind of flail a little bit more, which is cool. I mean, it works. Uh, I've tied them that way before. This is my favorite one just because it holds up better for me and because it's just how I've been doing it for a long time. Um, again, I don't think I mentioned this thread that I'm using right here is just a plain, uh, plain Jane all-purpose, you know, thread. It's something I got from like Walmart or somewhere like that. Um, the hooks I did get from a fly shop, the Chanel I did get from a fly shop, but the thread does not have to be. The copper, again, was from a piece of speaker wire, I think it was. Um, and lastly, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the fly out of the vise. There we go. And you can actually see the full fly right there. Um, but what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this guy over. Straighten him out a little bit. And to hold everything in place, make sure everything stays right where I want it. Go ahead and turn that a little bit so you can see it better. I'm gonna use, again, the uh, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails Nail Polish Hardener, I guess is what it's called. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda brush some of it on here on this underbelly. And this, again, will soak into the threads here. 
and will help cement everything in place. It'll seep down in there, it'll hold the copper in place, it'll hold all those threads together so they don't uh, start coming loose. Even if that knot were to come loose, none of those threads will, but of course the knot has it on there too. And then you just let it dry. So there's the San Juan worm. Again, there's tons of different variations. This is just my favorite way of tying it. This is the one that's been the most effective and the most useful to me. Again, I've caught trout, rainbow and brown trout. I've caught bluegill and other sunfish. I've caught largemouth bass. I've caught carp, catfish, and red horse sucker on this fly. There's a whole host of other different fish you could catch on it. Um, I just haven't targeted them with it. Um, I've actually heard, you know, things like tilapia, a lot of other different species of trout, cutthroats, uh, brook trout, stuff like that. You can, you know, this, this fly just has lots of different uses. So until next time, this is Cowboy713 signing out. Tight lines. We'll see you next time.